Now, if you've been around my channel for some time, then it should come as no surprise to you that I am a very big fan of BoJack Horseman. Chances are you've heard about how awesome this show is and why many people put it in the running for one of the best adult animated shows of all time. But today, I'm not here to stroke this horse's ego or any other part of it for that matter. No, no, today I am here on serious business because as it turns out, this horse guy might be an imposter. That's right, idiots. Bojack Horseman wasn't the first show about a washed up actor that also happens to be a horse. No, no. The first show to ever do that was a canceled pilot called You Animal. You Animal was a pilot made way back in 2004 by Bruce Wagner in an offshoot of Klasky Chupo animation called Global Tantrum for Spike TV. Now who's Klasky Chupo animation? We'll just take a look at this character design. Can you tell yet? Look at the penis veins on the nose. Nothing? Yeah, me neither. I didn't put it together right away either. But it's the Rugrats studio. Remember Rugrats? They did this. For real, the studio that brought you Rugrats also happened to fund this pilot that looks a whole hell of a lot like our boy Bojack Horseman. You Animal is an eight minute pilot about a washed up actor called Joey Poot, voiced by Jeffrey Tambor. Now for you keen eyed viewers, or I guess people that have seen Arrested Development, it's the guy in Arrested Development, the dead, George. Uh, also Will Arnett's in that show. Coincidence? Is it a coincidence that the voice voice actor for BoJack Horseman was in a show that also has the guy that voices Joey Poot in the canceled pilot. I think it's a conspiracy, except probably not. Probably it's probably just a coincidence. And yes, Joey Poot is a horse. And after a couple hours of research, I was able to deduce that Bojack is also a horse. But the similarities don't stop there. In the world of you animal, humans and anthropomorphic animals live side by side and no one really acknowledges how weird that is, just like in Bojack Horseman. Is it a coincidence or is it one of Satan's favorite sins, being a filthy copycat? Well, that's what we're here to find out today, so join me as we work through the pilot known as You Animal, so we can see if it did in fact precede Bojack Horseman as a great show about a horse actor that's washed up and also there's other animals in it. Um, spoiler alert, no, this pilot sucks. It's awful. Let's see how it is! <laughs> <laughs> the pilot opens with Joey Poot performing a lounge act in black and white, giving us a glimpse of his successful past. It's a nice little song that I think works well as the show's theme song, and Joey then leaps from the stage to a table across from a pretty lady. Oh, wooga, am I right, fellas? Yeah, ah, come on, ladies too. Yeah, breasts, we love it, we love it on TV. I might have to censor them, I'll be real. There's a chance that they'll be censored slightly. But hey, woo, yeah. Best thing about this show, honestly, a drawing of breasts. Yes, it's true, Joey Poot is shown as being one cool dude back in the day that all the ladies loved, but as we'll soon learn, he's not really that guy anymore except for when he is about three minutes into the pilot, but we'll get there. After this nice little title card, we cut to the present day at Joey Poot's mansion where all sorts of Hollywood elites are showing up to honor him with a visionary achievement award. It's at this ceremony where we get to hear from someone whose life was touched by Joey Poot. I first met Joey Poot when we co-starred in the extraordinary independent film, Cup of Moonlight. About a year after filming, I was struck by a car while on a crosswalk. Joey paid my medical bills. He held a press conference and told the world why I was crossing the road. To get to the other side, he said. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> hey, that was actually a pretty solid scene and solid joke. I actually kind of like that. And I'm sure some of you are wondering right now, hey, Mr. Cow, what's the deal here? This seems pretty good so far. And you'd be right. The first minute or so is pretty good. It's once we get inside Joey Poot's house that things take a turn for the worse. Joey Poot is nowhere to be found at the award ceremony, so his publicist and what I assume is his agent or accountant head off to find him. And let me be the first to say yikes when it comes to these two character designs. The publicist pig looks pretty ridiculous and gross, and then the agent character is fairly... Well, yikes might be the best word for it that's ad-friendly. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but I assure you, it's not what it looks like. It is, however, what it looks like 
and sounds like. Listen to this character's voice real quick. Joey, listen. This is our last chance. You haven't worked in two years. If you don't accept the honor, your talk show pilot goes out the window. That means no commercial endorsements, no revenue stream. You lose the house. Now look, I get it's adult animation and that tends to lead to artists wanting to push the envelope with what is and isn't allowed on TV. And I'm all for that. But this character design looks like something taken out of World War II propaganda and not propaganda from the winning side. And that's the real problem with You Animal as a pilot. It aims to shock more than it aims to actually entertain in a logical and fun way. And what do I mean by logical? Well, none of these characters are anything but caricatures. They're just weird, gross, off-putting designs with voices attached to them, and then they do things. I don't know why they do them. I don't know what their motivations are. Seemingly, they're all motivated by money, like pretty clear cut across the board. Even Joey Poot to a certain point, which you'll see later on in the pilot, he gives this whole speech where he's like, well, it's not about all this other stuff. It's about money and partying. And it's like, isn't that kind of funny? No, because I don't know anything about these characters. I don't know why I should care. And as a pilot, you should be selling the audience and executives that are seeing it on why they should care about this series and why they should watch episode two of it. That point never really comes up in You Animal. It's shock value over entertainment, which is one of the worst ways to go about making entertainment, to ignore the entertainment part. I don't think I need to say anything more when it comes to these character designs. If they don't offend you, like that's, I, that's fine, I guess, if you don't find it offensive, but I think we can all agree that these characters aren't defined as anything other than their voices and their character designs themselves. They aren't defined as characters. I don't know what they want. I don't know where they're going. I don't know why they're doing the things they're doing. They all seem to be broadly motivated by money and all this other stuff, which just isn't a great basis for characters. That's where I stand on it so far. It turns out Joey Poot is locked up in his room practicing yoga with an instructor and he has been shitting on the floor for some reason. Cause isn't it funny? Look, oh, they picked it up. Ooh, stinky. Adult animation. This is what the medium was invented for. Uh oh, stinky horse shitting on the floor. Oh my God, isn't that funny? The yoga instructor's design is also fairly stereotypical, which again, I'll chalk up to this show putting shock value over everything else and Joey's publicist and agent try to talk him into attending his award ceremony. You know, the award ceremony happening at his house, in his backyard. Why is he hosting an award ceremony at his house if he doesn't believe in awards? Awards are not real. The only thing real is human suffering and human compassion. The body is impermanent. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I mean, it's all punctuated with a nice little fart joke. I mean, I, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say I feel genuinely a little bit gross watching this pilot. It just feels so lazy with how they approached it. And I get animation's hard, writing's hard and all that stuff. I, I'll give them this. The animation, they seemed like they put effort into it. All right, I'm not questioning any people's work on that front. But just for the final product that we have here, there's nothing to grab onto like with some other pilots that I've seen that have been like, oh, wow, I want to see what this show looks like in episode two, three, four, five, six for the rest of season one. I want to see a season two. I don't want to look at this anymore. I'm not laughing. I'm not having a good time. I'm not being entertained. I don't know anything about the characters. I just have a genuine feeling of unease and disgust, which I, I don't know if you guys have pieced it together yet is bad. It's a bad thing. The pig publicist tries to convince Joey to take the award because if he stops making money, she won't be able to help her trans son. My son needs an operation. Huh? He was born in the wrong body. He thinks and dresses like a sow, and I want to help make that dream happen. Come on, Joey. Have pity on me. I'm your publicist! Again, it seems like the only reason this is here is for shock value. It serves no purpose in the story. It kind of makes me like the pig character a bit more, I guess. But when you really think about it, this whole situation makes absolutely no sense. They don't give a reason as to why Joey Poot not accepting this award at his house will ruin his career. They just assert that. There's no actual reasoning for it. I mean, it's being televised and there's a lot of industry people there, sure. But if he's that big of a deal where he's getting an award and he doesn't show up for it, like, is that really the biggest deal? Like, it's all very, very contrived and stupid. I just, 
can't get attached to any part of this pilot. And it's only like eight minutes long, minus credits, it's like nine minutes total. So you've got to sell the audience on it somehow. And I just don't know what part of this people could get even slightly excited about. But from here, we cut to the kitchen where Joey Poot's staff is working. And in the kitchen is a horse lady character who I guess lives with Joey. I think it's his sister, but it's unclear. She, she's there and she's worried about being poor because Joey won't work. I, I don't know who she is. I don't think they mention it in the pilot. I don't think they say this is his sister. That's what I'm inferring, but it's so muddled. They spent all their time on this dumb shock humor and shock value of these character designs. It feels like everything else went out the window. It just comes across as so goddamn lazy. I mean, I'll say it a million times. Lazy, lazy, lazy. That's what shock value will come across as if you don't have something else to prop it up. Exhibit A, South Park, where they have, you know, a point to some of the episodes and story structure and characters that do things based off their interests and what they like and don't like and all these other things that make characters interesting. Goals, you know, motivations. None of that's here. Uh, Joey Poot's motivation to accept the award is, I don't want to because I think they're meaningless, yet he's hosting this thing at his house and that's never explained. His publicist and his agent seemingly only care about money. His sister or whoever this horse girl is only cares about money. She doesn't want to move back to a crappy life without suckling on the teat of Joey Poot's money. Like, they're all very vapid and stupid and lame and it's not like Arrested Development where you have all these vapid, stupid characters and then you have one grounded one that kind of brings everything together and is the driving force behind the show, that character isn't here. There is no grounded character. There is no straight man. Everyone is just weird and eccentric and stupid, and it doesn't make for an entertaining TV show. But anyways, Joey's sister horse character person, she knows Joey is in a dark place because he is leaning into spirituality, hence the yoga. So she devises a plan to get Joey back to his normal self. I've seen Joey get like this before. When he's under stress, he goes new age spiritual. There's only one thing that'll bring him to his senses. Hard dope! Hard dope in the rear end! Man, at this point, it's just starting to get sad. This show is trying so hard to be like, edgy and like interesting. It's trying to stand out as an adult animated show. Can you believe how crazy that pilot was? It's called You Animal. They shoot straight dope in it, man. There's crazy stereotypical caricatures of all these characters doing funny voices. It's the coolest show on TV. I genuinely don't know anyone that would watch this show. Like as it is right now up to this point, I cannot think of a single person that would enjoy it. That's a problem. So anyways, the publicist and the agent and accountant guy, who cares? They all go with the sister and try to shoot up Joey with the dope, but uh-oh, there's a ring at the door. One of Joey's maids or someone answers it, and it's revealed to be an old bull called Alfred Claggart, who was one of Joey's teachers in elementary school. And Joey is very excited to see his old teacher, but his sister or whoever this horse is still wants to shoot him up with the syringe. And she swings and misses and winds up hitting the agent in the rear end, which leads to this. Mr. Claggart? Oi! All right, I'm starting to understand why I haven't seen many people talk about this thing. It's pretty fucking bad. I mean, there's just, there's nothing here of substance or value up through this point. And would you believe it's about to get worse? It's about to get more convoluted. Just listen to this part. The old bull sits down with Joey and explains that he was shot by a student in class and that his wife died because tragedy and funny, I guess. Isn't it funny that he got shot in class by a student and that his wife is dead? I really don't know what angle the writers were going for here. I'm being completely honest with you guys. I don't know what their thought process was here. I don't know if like six minutes got cut off of this pilot or something, but it's so, so stupid and unfunny. It's really amazing. The old bull continues to explain that he's there in hopes that Joey will let him stay at his house until he's back on his feet, and Joey agrees. He has a kind heart, and this person from a previous point in his life has come out and is reaching out for help, and he's there to offer it in return for all the help he must have offered him while he was in school. And then the old bull emotionally manipulates Joey into accepting his award because it would make him feel proud. That's why the night is so important. About that award. When you stand up tonight and get the Wardell Cummings Crystal Visionary Award. It's meaningless. I'm going to be so proud. The Buddha says that. I feel like, like I've come home. 
Now I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, this is an old teacher for Joey. That's kind of interesting. He came back into his life because of this award ceremony that's happening. He's very proud of him. He's excited to see him accept an award. What did this teacher teach Joey? He must have been like an acting teacher or a coach or something like that. It's his third grade homeroom teacher. Who's he? Joey's homeroom teacher in third grade. Like, I don't know if that's supposed to be a joke. Like, oh, isn't it funny that it's his homeroom teacher and not something that would make sense or be interesting? This is, this is what we're dealing with here. This is beyond bad. Like, I can fix this in 20 seconds. Instead of having it be a homeroom teacher, have it be his acting teacher. And you can go two ways with it. The first way being, it's an acting teacher that Joey hates and he's there to see his student who's accepting this amazing award, and Joey's accepting it out of spite because he wants to rub into his old acting teacher how far he's made it and how far his old acting teacher has fallen, but then it turns out that his old acting teacher is in a really bad place and Joey offers to have him stay at his house so he can continue to flaunt how well he is doing, hence motivating him to get back into the industry, to get back to working, just out of spite. There's something for the character, it's kind of unlikable, it makes sense, it makes you think Joey's like not a great guy, he's doing these things out of spite, but also that could become kind of funny in a way too, and maybe he could learn and grow to forgive this old acting teacher that didn't believe in him. Or you could go the other way and just make it an acting teacher that was really supportive of Joey's career. And he was like, you can go do it. No one else believed in Joey, but this acting teacher did. And I'm gonna accept this award for him because I'm so happy for what he did for me. I wanna do something good for him by accepting this award and honoring him in that way. Instead of anything like that that I just laid out, it's just his old homeroom teacher from third grade which is so goddamn stupid and pointless. And honestly, this whole pilot feels stupid and pointless. Let me tell you right now. No one learns anything or grows. I don't know a goddamn thing about any of these characters. And worst of all, the comedy falls completely flat. But don't worry everybody, we have something now that is very current and relevant and stands to the test of time in the world of comedy. Bill Clinton. Remember Bill Clinton? Well, they got a really good impersonator for this show and he's presenting the award to Joey. When Bill Clinton calls for Joey, out walks the agent who is completely naked because he is high on dope. Remember the dope from earlier? And after he walks off, out walks Joey, who gives a speech that totally explains why everything in this pilot happened the way it happened. I wasn't going to accept this award tonight. I told myself awards didn't mean anything, that they were candy for the ego. The truth of it is, I had a chip on my withers. I had a tough time in this business, didn't want to forgive and forget, didn't want to let go. Sometimes, it takes a face from the past to shake us up and get us to stop playing games. This life is about suffering and compassion. It's also about money and partying. I love you all. I mean, it still doesn't make a ton of sense. I don't really understand any of the characters, but on the bright side, it's almost over. I will say Bill Clinton has a really funny line where he says Boner City right after this, so that's at least something. Oh heck, I'm the same way whenever I get a tribute. Boner City. And then it's party time. Everyone is partying. They're doing their partying thing. The old bull teacher guy says he pooped his pants. Oops, I think I pooped my pants. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny for adult animation? Laugh, stupid. This this is supposed to be funny. Laugh, idiot. The agent who is high on dope eats out the chicken in the wheelchair from earlier and then he throws her in the pool by accident where I guess she drowns. And then Joey heads off with three ladies and Bill Clinton kisses a pig. And that is the entire pilot. For real, that's it. Well, I didn't like that one bit. No sir, not at all. That, uh, that sucked. I cannot believe that was something that was sitting in the back of my mind for the last fuck, seven years, I guess. I remember hearing about this pilot and people talking about it like, oh, this is like the precursor to BoJack Horseman. Can you believe it? Look at all these similarities. This is so far away from BoJack Horseman in every way, shape and form. I am blown away. The truth is there's really only three similarities between You Animal and BoJack Horseman. Both shows have a horse as the main character, both horses are washed up actors, and both shows take place in a world that has both animal and human characters. Other than that, these two shows couldn't be more different, with the main difference being BoJack Horseman is actually good. I'm chalking this one up as just a strange little coincidence. If BoJack Horseman ripped off this show, well, then they turned it into something actually watchable because this pilot is downright 
terrible. I have almost nothing nice to say about it, and if I did, it's already been in the video up to this point. But that's all I got to say on the matter. Thank you all very much for watching. I am genuinely shocked that this pilot was as bad as it was. I have heard about it for years and never checked it out, and now that I have, I wish I had never done it. It sucks so bad. Hopefully it was entertaining for you guys, though. Let me know in the comment section below. We're using the webcam because it saves time in editing and I have editing work to do if you're curious about that. That's all. Bye. Good luck. Ah. You like my Sal? Do you like my big Sal? I think it's pretty good.